What the public see is a man who has debased the office of Prime Minister, shrinked responsibility, dogged accountability and blamed his staff at every turn, presided over sleaze and corruption and tainted the very institutions of the state. In short, Mr Speaker, this is a man... Well, they can laugh. They can laugh. But the public know. The public know this is a man they can no longer trust. He has been investigated by the police. He misled the House. He must now resign. Order. You'll have to withdraw that last comment. Mr Speaker, I gave the evidence of the 8th of December. And, oh, order. Order. You're going to have to withdraw misled. Mr Speaker, the Prime Minister has misled the House. Unless you withdraw, I will have to stop, and that's not good. Just withdraw the words. I am standing up for my constituents that know that this Prime Minister has lied and misled the House. Give me the paper. Give me the paper. Inadvertently misled. I'll give you one more chance. As leader of the SNP, I don't want to have to throw you out. I'm going to give you this chance. Please. Increase to power. That man has misled the House. Shut up. The Prime Minister of the United Kingdom is a liar. Mm-hmm. I genuinely don't say that lightly and I don't say it loosely. I honestly believe that it's right that we are slow to use that word. But I equally believe that it is right that we should never be slow to say it and to call it out when it is so obviously true. Because members across this House know it to be true and the public have long known that to be true. And that is why it needs to be said today and why we all need to act. Because, Mr Speaker, every single day in this chamber there are motions that come before this House which are complex and nuanced. And there are usually two sides to an argument and valid reasons from whichever position is proposed. But I think we can safely say that this definitively isn't one of these debates. The evidence of the motion speaks for itself. It's as clear as day. If there ever was an open and shut case, (coughs) this is it. Mr Speaker, last December, the Prime Minister came to this House and denied that there were any parties in 10 Downing Street during the long Covid lockdowns. (coughs) Typically and tellingly, he hid behind his staff in saying it. He told us that he was given firm reassurance that no parties had happened, that no rules had been broken. Every member of this parliament witnessed it. Mm -hmm. The public saw it with their own eyes. And shamefully, to this very day, it is still on the record of this House. But we know the truth. And the truth contains no ifs, no buts, and no maybes. Mr Speaker, the House was misled. And so were the public. And we were all misled, deliberately, because the Prime Minister knew the truth. Not only were parties happening, not only was the law broken, the Prime Minister was at the very parties he denied had even happened. The truth is simple, and it's this. He lied to avoid getting caught. And once he got caught, he lied again. Mm -hmm. There is no other way to describe it. There is no other word for it. Now, Mr Speaker, I can understand that this may be a terrible truth for the government benches to hear. But it's a truth that they need to hear, and it's a truth they need to live with. And I say to the Father of the House, who I've got the utmost respect for, this has got nothing to do with any elections. This is about the behaviour of a Prime Minister in office. And much more importantly, the uncomfortable truth that the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom is a liar is exactly why they finally need to act 
and remove him from office. Yeah, yeah. And other Prime Ministers, including all the predecessors as Conservative Prime Ministers, would have been long gone by now. Mr Speaker, the benches opposite put the Prime Minister in power. They have the power to remove him, and the public expect them to act. Mr Speaker, we have reached this point, a motion of contempt in a sitting Prime Minister is shocking, but unfortunately it is no surprise. Russian oligarchs, who give the right people in power a golden handshake, have been welcomed into London for years. Their activities weren't stopped, they were encouraged. And plenty of these golden handshakes just so happened to find their way into the coffers of the Conservative Party. Mr Speaker, £2.3 million, pounds, in fact, since the Prime Minister took office. A leading American think tank has publicly raised concerns, and I quote, about the close ties between Russian money and the United Kingdom's ruling Conservative Party are a block to stronger sanctions. How can our allies trust this Prime Minister to clean up dirty Russian money in the UK when he won't even clean up his own political party? Will he finally commit, finally commit to giving up the 2.3 million his party has raised in from Russian oligarchs? I'm sorry it's come to this, and I'm sorry that the leader of the party has not got the decency to just withdraw those words in order that this debate can be represented by all political leaders. Would you like to inadvertently? If the Prime Minister has inadvertently misled the House, then I will state that. Right, we're going to leave it at that. (laughs) Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, I'm grateful to the uh, Right Honourable Gentleman for withdrawing uh, what he just said, because he was wrong then, and uh, he, I'm afraid, is wrong in, the, in, in his, his analysis. And I, 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 I apologise, as I've said, for uh, all the suffering that people have had throughout this pandemic and, uh, and for the anger that people feel uh, about uh, what has taken place in, in Number 10 Downing Street. But I've got, I've got to tell the, uh, the Right Honourable Gentleman that for much of what he said, uh, his best course is simply to wait for the, uh, for the inquiry to be completed. Can I just say, I take it the Honourable Member has withdrawn it, the Right Honourable Member. That the Prime Minister may have inadvertently misled the House. But, no. should, or, order. To help me, to help the House, you withdraw withdrawn your earlier comment and replaced it with inadvertently. It's not my fault if the Prime Minister can't be trusted. Under the power given to me by Standing Order No. 43, I order the Honourable Member to withdraw immediately from the House. From the House. Can I do the SNP, Ian Blackford? Thank you, Mr Speaker. I'm sure the whole House will want to join me in sending prayers and condolences to the wife of Doddy Weir, who sadly passed away at the weekend. The absolute giant of a man, an inspirational figure in Scottish rugby, and someone who raised £8 million for MND charities over the course of the last six years. Our thoughts and prayers are with Cathy, with Hamish, with Angus and with Ben. Mr Speaker, let me wish everyone a happy St Andrew's Day. Those that know anything about St Andrew know that he is not just the patron of Scotland, he is celebrated right across Europe. That is why it is such a sad sight to watch this Prime Minister ram through a bill that would rip up 4,000 pieces of European law. Laws that protect workers' rights, food standards and environmental protections. And it's an even worse sight watching the leader of the Labour Party desperately trying to out-Brexit the Prime Minister. Swiss-style deal. Brexit is now the elephant in the room that neither the Tories or Labour are willing to confront. Not only do we have a UK government that denies democracy, we now have a Secretary of State that is running scared from it. In the middle of a Tory cost-of-living crisis, the Scotland office 
is now to be led by a baron in waiting, yep. biding his time until he can cash in on the 300 day job for life in the House of Lords. He should be sacked from the Cabinet, and the people of Dumfries and Galloway should be given the chance to sack the Tories yeah, yeah. in a by election. The Prime Minister's judgment is already in tatters. If he has any integrity left, will he now put a stop to these two predecessors stuffing the House of Lords yep. with his cronies?